Ladies and gentlemen, hello, I am Angel, and we now begin our let's play of Klingon Academy. So let's enjoy the intro. Positive identification of the traitor's cruiser, linking to your tactical display. Follow my intercept course. Take us around the fiercest fighting and deliver us near his flank. The target shows no sign of evasion. General, forward weapons locked and ready. Your shield is down. Forward disruptors. Recharged and locked. Roll fire. Lower shields. General, they are beaten. I request the honor of delivering the final death stroke. Maintain your position aft of their rear shield array until you hear from me directly. We'll now bring an end to this charade. Chief Engineer, transport me to the traitor's bridge. I care nothing for the damage to the engines. I want change. Take them off and bring us back, or your head will adorn my... Kalnor, son of Geoff. I challenge you under the ancient rites of blood peace. Your officers will bear witness. Chang, this is not one of your lectures at the Academy. This is a warship of the House of Geoch. Your life became my property the moment you beamed aboard. There will be no duel. Our ancestors settled their differences in this fashion. The right of blood peace may have fallen out of favor in this decadent age, but it is no less binding today. Or will you flaunt your cowardice in the very presence of your men? You are a fool, Chang. Chancellor Lorak will fall. His illness weakens him by the hour. Already he is unfit to lead the High Council. Withdraw this challenge. Join me, and I will ensure a proper place for you within my new government. You cannot avoid my challenge, Kalnor. If it is Lorak's fate to be deposed, so be it. I will ensure his successor will be a man of honor, not a cowardly son of Geoch. <laughs> <laughs> words of Shakespeare now, Chang. Had you accepted my offer, you would have lived to fight your true enemy. Now you're just a glob fly on the road to my ascension. But a walking shadow. It is a tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Well, 
what a fantastic intro. I mean, I get goosebumps just watching that. This is such a contrast to the intro of Starfleet Academy. Oh, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what is ostensibly the prequel, direct prequel to Star Trek VI The Undiscovered Country, at least from the Klingon point of view. Uh, I've been looking forward to playing this for quite a while. I think quite a few of you have been looking forward to me playing this. Um, had some issues getting it up and running exactly how I wanted, but after a couple of hours of messing around, I'm now satisfied. Um, the intro is, uh, yeah, compared to the Starfleet intro, which is very, very Star Trek, you know, hopeful, optimistic, just beginning our new career as Starfleet cadets. Here, it's the complete opposite. We're into battle, duty, honor, uh, and all the good stuff that the Klingon society tends to represent. We've obviously uh, opened into the ma middle of a massive civil war, or at least what looks like a civil war. A nice opening big fleet battle. And uh, we get reintroduced, I suppose, to uh, Christopher Plummer as the magnificent General Chang. And already we get to see how he loses his eye. Uh, and it's in this fight. And already just little attention to details like that. It's, it's stuff like this I really appreciate. Yeah. I'm I'm really looking forward to this. This this could be very interesting. I'm I'm hoping it won't be too buggy, or at least not as buggy as Starfleet Academy. This game does have quite a few differences to Starfleet Academy. Um, I, I don't know if I'll be able to cover them all at once, and there's going to be stuff I'm forgetting or not quite sure how to do. I'm going to jump into a simulator mission just very quickly, um, just so I can go through some of the stuff without having to waste time doing it in the missions, because I don't want to possibly break any scripting, so we'll just put a couple of things here. In fact, I don't want anything to attack me, so let's just uh, do this. This is the skirmish um, quick battle scene. You can basically add up to, I think, eight ships aside, or is it 16 ships aside? There is a limitation, basically, but you can have yourself a nice big old fleet battle if you really want it. So let's load this. A magnificently quick loading time. Right, so here we go. Now, unlike Starfleet Academy, we do not have uh, screens, you know, of our crew. In fact, unlike Starfleet Academy, we don't have a named bunch of crew uh, cadets with us. We are Cadet Torlek, the main character. And then we do have, like, other officers, but they... I think they're nameless, and we, we never see or hear them. We never see Torlek either. All we hear is Torlek's voice. So I imagine, probably to save some money, they might have a le might have had a less budget. But also, you know, having to make everyone in Klingon makeup is itself uh, probably quite expensive. So we've got our weapons. Uh, again, unlike Starfleet Academy, we actually have a, more, uh, a wide array of weapons this time. Uh, so we've got regular disruptors. We're, we're in a Katinga or a D7 um, a cruiser. So we've got regular disruptors, we have torpedoes, and we have heavy disruptors. And there are other weapons to come along the way. We've got uh, a much better shield readout down below. Uh, the UI is actually quite small because I'm, I'm running on um, 1920 by 1080 so the, the UI basically scales along with the resolution. Uh, but I can already see the numbers on my shield indicators, dorsal and ventral shields are more clearly marked, and we have uh, systems down in the bottom, uh, far bottom left there. But there are actually stations, so if we have a look, you have the con. We have all of this stuff. I don't know how much I'm going to be going into this. Some of this looks a little bit indecipherable to me. Taking the con. Uh, we've got helm. That was engineering, helm. communications. Helm, you have security. So yes, we've got boarding teams in this one. Uh, we have marines on our, our ship we can use for boarding actions. Uh, medical. We actually have personnel and crewmen we need to worry about. Helm, you have the con. Science. Sensors. Helm, you have the con. Weapons. And we actually have a gunnery uh, chair this time, so we can actually... Um, jump in and fire our other disruptor banks in different ways. So if you see on the top here, we've got a forward angle, we've got our starboard and port angles, which have uh, those disruptors, and then we've got rear weaponry as well. I believe they all fire automatically uh, if there's in range. Um, but I'm going to have to figure that out. And then we've got damage control. Let's have a look at weapons quickly. Oh, we've got library as well. So this is like the Starfleet Academy library. Ooh, nice. I've got some stats on weapons. Alright, uh, let's have a look at the weapons more closely. 
So mode, auto, boresight, fire at will. Attack lock target. So it looks like our weapons will automatically fire at anything we want or we have first certain things here. So I've noticed also here we can expand this and we can overcharge our shields. We can set what level we want to overcharge them. But this does affect our power levels. Power levels will affect how fast we go and whatnot. Captain has taken the I'm, I'm just rushing through this from what I remember. Um, the biggest thing is power allocation. This is a lot more important in this game than Starfleet Academy, which I didn't really bother with. So if we... If you see all along the bottom, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. These are the different stations and things you have. There are so many different controls and options that we have, but the, the main one, as I said, is power allocation. So if I could uh, press one and three, we've got different power allocations, and these are basically macros which set certain power allocations in certain ways. So more power to shields, more power to weapons, engines, cloak, sensors, whatever. This is possibly one of the very rarest times I'm actually using the macro keys on my keyboard because I have a G19. So instead of me going one, three, one, power allocation. I'm just pressing one button, engage power, engage power, engage power, and I can just go straight to whatever power allocation I want. So that's gonna save me some time doing that. And yeah, I think that pretty much covers the basics. Um, I did test this as well. If I'm in a station while I'm uh, in combat, the combat is still gonna go on. So I'm honestly not sure how much time I'm gonna spend in these screens or if I'm gonna need it, but yeah. That's that's the basics of the gameplay. So, shall we begin our adventure in uh, Klingon Academy? I think we shall. Let's begin. And just listen to this soundtrack. It's one thing uh, the main menu had in uh, that Starfleet Academy didn't is music. We've got epic music. We've got this kind of operatic, which is, you know, Klingon opera, I guess. Uh, nice view of the Klingon homeworld here, or at least the, the capital city. Far more than we ever saw in the next generation, I think. Very kind of brutalist architecture. Anyway, I'm going to shut up. Let's, uh, let's have a listen. At last, this day has arrived. So many years of training, study, and instruction. Now I, Torlek, son of Rokva, have earned a place in this hall. The honor to my family name alone was worth the struggle. But what will the general think? Will he recognize that I possess the strength to lead my fellow warriors into battle? Will he? He's here. I officially welcome you to the Klingon Defense Forces Elite Command Academy. You have surpassed your peers to earn a place within this distinguished hall. But I tell you, this is not enough. In the days to come, you will be tested well beyond your current limitations. Most of you will fail, and failure will mean your immediate dismissal from this institution. Past achievements mean nothing here. I am not interested in the names of your fathers, nor of your family's lineage. What I am interested in is your breaking point. How will you conduct yourselves in battle? How far will you go to preserve your honor and fulfill your duty? These are simple questions that will decide the fate of our empire. One day there will be a war with our true enemy, the Federation. There are those who disagree, but it will happen. Before that day arrives, your role within this great conflict must be determined. This academy was conceived to create the very finest warship commanders in the galaxy. Those few of you who succeed will be granted immediate command of a warship. For those who do not, there will be no disgrace. Whatever becomes of you, 
either at this academy or beyond, never forget, you are all Klingon warriors. Klingon warriors. I have placed a challenge before you. Let us conclude this address and begin the trial. Okay, uh, it wants to know if I want to do training missions. Hmm. I'm probably going to say no. If I feel like I will, I might just go and do them off camera, but I, I, cause I just kind of want to get to the story. But before I proceed, uh, lovely intro. The audio design is great. Uh, the, the CGI is definitely an improvement. Still obviously a bit low quality, but definitely an improvement. I could just watch Christopher Plummer as Chang all day. I think one of the things I really like about this as well is that it, uh, in this, uh, Star Trek VI, Chang, although he's a great villain, doesn't really get a lot of motivation. His character isn't actually fleshed out all that much. He's just kind of just the, the villain. But this really sets up and explains his point of view, his motivations, and why he ends up doing what he does in Star Trek VI. And it makes him a lot more of a sympathetic character, um, as I recall, anyway. Um... But, uh, yeah. Also, a thought occurred to me that Chang is, until Discovery, Klingons, who, which I don't really count as prime time. I know it's supposed to be the canon timeline. I don't care. Discovery, to me, is not canon timeline. Um, in my head, anyway. But until that, Chang is and was the only Klingon portrayed as bald. I don't recall any other Klingon that was portrayed as bald. And it really works for him. I just cannot imagine Chang with the kind of that typical uh, glam rock hair that the Klingons typically rock. But yeah, for him, it really works. And I kind of wonder if the Discovery Klingons were kind of, you know, they, they looked at Chang and thought, let's do this. It was a terrible idea because those Klingons are horrible. And has now been retconned in uh, Picard Season 3 and from what I've seen, Strange New Worlds Season 2. They've gone back to the traditional makeup, so... Good for them. Anyway, so shall we continue now with our first mission? We're going to say no to the training missions and hope I don't make a mis terrible mistake here. What a fine collection of warriors. So eager for battle. Are you prepared to destroy your enemy? Really? Today, you will fire the first shots in a campaign that will lead to the destruction of the Federation. This campaign is not real, but I assure you, it will be worse than real. If you can defeat them in my simulated trials, you will be able to defeat them anywhere, at any time. I believe you know when an enemy intends you harm, but are you truly prepared? Have you meticulously observed your enemy? Have you? discerned his weaknesses, appraised his strengths, discovered his greatest hopes and fears. To know your enemy is to defeat him before you have faced him. Do not wait until you meet in the coldness of space, for space is the harshest instructor. In any future conflict, the Federation expects a coordinated assault by the Klingon and Romulan empires. They expect us to seize territory along the border then entrench ourselves for a protracted conflict. Therefore, we will do no such thing. We will begin by creating a breach in the infamous neutral zone. Your task, as part of the Gorcha Group 1, will be to pave the way for our heavy strike forces. Over the years, Starfleet has installed powerful sensor probe nets along their side of the neutral zone to monitor our movements while a cloaked vessel is extremely difficult to detect under normal conditions. It can be traced at short range by a sufficiently powerful probe net. We must destroy their probe nets without alerting Starfleet before our strike groups can cross the neutral zone. Jamming cruisers will be positioned along the probe net in the Targa sector. Once these are in place and all communications jammed, you will destroy the sensor probes and their monitoring stations. Now, make your approach. Under cloak, the element of surprise must be maintained. Good hunting. Sir, 
Commander Thokmok is hailing the fleet. Open channel. I am Instructor Thokmok, and it is I who will evaluate your performance within these trials. It is my duty to recommend your advancement when you have earned it, or to seek your dismissal if you have failed. Do not confuse me with my famous brother, Colonel Worf, the Imperial Arbiter for the High Council. I am not here to speak for you or to defend you. I am here to help General Chang test you beyond your breaking point. Now that you know this, we will begin. In this mission, cadets, you are responsible for creating a breach in the Federation probe net along the neutral zone. You must destroy the monitoring stations in your assigned systems and several of their sensor probes. The element of surprise is crucial. Jamming cruisers have been ordered to disrupt enemy communications within each targeted system. Approach your targets while cloaked. Your assigned jamming cruiser will signal you for when to commence the attack. After your targets are destroyed, remain with your assigned jamming cruiser until it warps out. May Otter guide you, cadets. Cloak your vessels and proceed to the Federation border. Folk mock out. Captain, we have received our assignment. We are to hit the Beta Seti monitoring station and its probe net. All right. Okay, so we can now begin. Uh, I love the briefing. It's uh, we're already getting a, kind of a, a Tie Fighter style briefing map. Well, I say style, but we're getting a briefing map which we didn't have in Starfleet Academy. So we have to destroy the monitoring station. We're going to cloak our ships up. So I'm going to go to stealth mode. God, I love hearing the cloaking sound effect. It just oh, it's so good, so good. Anyway, uh, okay, uh, helm, warp out system. A SETI, and we can choose our. I, I don't think choosing our, our warp speed is going to really matter for out of system stuff, but it does matter for in system stuff. Yes, we can warp about in system. There is a lot to go through in this game. There, there is so much more uh, complexity and uh, nuances to this game than Starfleet Academy. Although, my first criticism so far the textures on that jamming cruiser are terrible, they, they look awful. But on the flip side, we're getting a lot of variety of new Klingon ships here. Okay, so here we are. We right. Beta SETI system undetected, sir. Okay, so I guess we destroy the monitoring system first. Let's go there. Okay, so my speed is pretty we low in stealth mode. Jamming the system, sir. We are clear to proceed with our attack. All right then, let's let's begin. Oh, there's mines. Okay, so we're in a bird of prey this time for, to begin with, which kind of makes sense. That klaxon you're hearing is if I'm going to potentially ram something, and I do recall that ramming is a problem in this game. But anyway, already I can tell that flying these things is more weighty than in Starfleet Academy. I'm really going to need to slow down on my approach. I've also... the throttle here is... yeah, I had to reassign my throttle in a weird way. So I'm still getting used to that as well. Uh oh. How's it now? But I need to kill this thing first. This thing's dying quite quickly. And there you go, this is another thing of my favourite aspect of this game, is the destruction. You can blow chunks of things off and you get debris and it looks great. Maybe not so much on that station, but wait until we start blowing chunks off Federation starships. Uh, what do we got? We got an Earth, An Earth versus a Burrell. Alright. This should be easy, right? And you see, ramming! Ramming speed! Engage power, engage power allocation. At once, sir! Okay. 
Where did he go? So we've got an indicator now on our reticule there where the enemy is, which is nice. We did not have that last time. Where did he go? Alright, so forgive me for some kind of fucking about. I'm still getting used to control mechanisms. Let's engage tractor beam, can we? No, we don't have a tractor beam, I don't think. Maybe not. I just noticed on the left hand side the objectives. We've got P for primary objective and S for secondary objectives. We have to scan the probe net, okay. Whoa! And also, ships are a lot tankier. This is not Starfleet Academy where sh uh, ship fights are over, over very quickly. Engagements here are going to be protracted. I also like the shield effects, they're much more improved over Starfleet Academy. I kind of like this kind of bubble shield effect which has this kind of shimmer. It takes a while, a second or two for them to disappear. We do have emergency thrusters as well, so we can do an emergency quick turn like uh, this, which doubles our turn speed, but it can also result in us losing control of our ship for several seconds as well. We've got emergency stop and emergency reverse, so if there is going to be a collision, potential collision, we can sort of slam on the brakes. Uh, come on. Oh, I just cloaked. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a button I want to press, because that drops your shields. <laughs> subsystem targeting. We've got a lot more subsystem options this time, and I think that's going to be necessary, especially as these ships are going to be a lot tankier. We, won't, we are going to want to take out things like weapons and impulse. I think this thing, yeah, he's kiting around me, which is really annoying. I think I was just going too fast to maintain my lock with him. Here we go, this we go. I think his, one of his shields are down. Alright, finally, we've got a good attack vector on him. Let's see if we can wear him down. I just hit emergency reverse. I believe the weight and speed of how ships turn is going to get worse the bigger class we go. And he just lost control. Yeah, nice. He's heavily damaged at this point. Let's see, subsystems. Uh, is it. Target. Subsystem. Let's try and hit his impulse. Yeah, let's try and hit his impulse engine so we can have a better time of shooting this guy. Ah. Uh. I bound my emergency reverse buttons to my uh, one of my hat pops, and cloaking is also on that button. So I'm occasionally hitting my cloak. I'm going to switch to offensive, get some more power to our weapons. But 
but that does reduce my uh, engine speed as well. Most of his shields are down. He's got hole, uh, holes in there. And this, this is an example of the damage model. You can see the holes developing on the hull. And he's dead. All right, finally. Has been eliminated. Right. We've got still some mines to deal with, which is very TIE Fighter. How far away did we get from these things? Let's take out these things. And just like TIE Fighter, they die in one hit, which is very nice. Unlike, all decks, sir. did I just die? Seriously compromised, sir. What? <laughs> okay. I'm gonna not do that entire thing again just for your sake. Uh, I will do the mission again and I'll get to the point where I, I was and uh, we'll go from there. Be right back. Okay, I am back, and I have destroyed everything, except for the probes themselves, and I believe I need to scan them first, so, uh, let's scan them, I guess, I think it's S, no, hang on, I need to find out what the buttons for scan is, uh, scan target is J, okay. The control probe for this cluster has been identified, Captain. Oh, nice. So we got some actual actual stats on the thing when we scan it. Okay, so it allows us to know which ones to kill exactly to cripple the probe net, so we don't have to destroy them all. Nice. Uh, I did get quite damaged because I did actually end up ramming the Oberth this time, so let's have a look at our damage control. Helm, you have the car. Heavy damage to hull, minor to warp. 51 minutes to repair. We actually have timers on repairing. Lovely, we were missing that from uh, Starfleet Academy. Mission clock. Oh. We have 24 hours to complete this mission. Okay, well, cool. <laughs> Interesting. You've taken the car. Well, nice to know. Engage power allocation. At once, sir. This sensor group has been disabled, Captain. Is there any other? There is. Okay. doing emergency stops so I don't end up ramming. Uh, already in having combat, the AI really wants to ram you. Uh, and will sometimes just do an emergency stop in front of you. They are quite suicidal. This is going to be an issue, but having things like emergency stop or reverse is really going to help mitigate these kind of problems. But already it just feels like I have to do a lot more in terms of manoeuvring Disabled, Captain. and uh, sort of orienting my ship a lot more than Starfleet Academy does. So rid of Burrell, that only has two disruptors and, well two light disruptors I guess, and a single torpedo launcher. There's no rear or side facing weaponry. Uh, give me some speed please. So it's quite limited but it is quick. 
despite that, it still feels, you know, it, it's not like Sensor group has been deceived. very responsive. So if I go up and then shift it down. You see there's that, the inertia. We have to fight the inertia so that it takes a second or two for us to switch directions. Um, so we're going to have to get used to that. I like it, but it's different. Okay, one more. Oh my god! I just rammed it. I'm okay. Let's just pretend that didn't happen. The group has been disabled, Captain. One more, I think. Ooh. You know that alarm sound? I uh, is wired in my head for total annihilation. That's what I remember that sound that uh, uh, from. Captain. The Federation probe net has been disabled, sir. Mission objective complete. Hey. I'm assuming that means mission complete. Or are we just going to stare at this bird? Of no, there we go. Fade out. All right, finally. Save game. Oh, we get an automatic mission. Okay, brilliant. That, that's that's fine for me. All right, I am going to cut this video off here. A mixed start in terms of how well I'm actually doing, but that's just me getting used to the control. I'm so used to how Starfleet Academy was playing that, uh, yeah, getting used to how Klingon Academy is playing, it, it, it really already feels like a very different beast in terms of flight mechanics and control. But yeah, already I'm quite enjoying this. Very, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping you will be enjoying this journey with me as well. Uh, I promise to not make any significant uh, Klingon impressions along the way because uh, it's going to be cringy but I, I might so suddenly break into uh, aggressive Klingon noises let's see but until then uh, do join me for next time I don't know if we're going to have uh, one or two missions it really depends I, I'm going to I feel like most of these missions are going to take a lot longer to do than Starfleet Academy so we'll see how it goes but uh, yeah thank you very much for joining me and until next time do take care <laughs>